Hey everyone, welcome back to my Calculus 1 series. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about linear approximations and differentials. A couple of lessons ago, we talked about uh, tangents and uh, tangents at a point at a curve. Now, linear approximations are kind of an extension at that. And essentially what we try and do is we try and approximate a value uh, on the curve through this linear approximation. One thing to notice about linear approximations is that it is very good at the point itself. However, the approximation gets really bad the further we move away from this point. So at A, you could see that the point is, is pretty good as I marked here. However, if we go at somewhere like, let's say this is, a, let's say the change here is B. If we go to a value uh, A plus B, we could see that now uh, the change is really bad. Essentially, the linear approximation at this value is no longer good, and we'd have to compute a new one. So we can use the equation of a line to represent this tangent, and the equation would go something like this, this being the slope of the tangent at that point. And likewise, we can represent the linear approximation of f uh, as a function uh, written like this. So as you can see, the linear approximation and the line, this red line right here, are exactly the same thing. And this formula right here can also be called the linearization of f. So both of these formulas are derived from the slope formula at uh, a. So we can take a look at this by saying f of, uh, f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And then if we would like to solve for f of x, we can just cross multiply this upward. Essentially, we're going to get f prime at a times x minus a is equal to f of x minus f of a. And we can bring this side over uh, to solve that f of x is equal to f prime at a x minus a plus f at a. And again, we're brought back to this formula. And this formula right here is also uh, the linearization of f. Now, as I said, we can use the linearization of a function to estimate values at certain points. So here would be a good example of how we can apply this linearization and uh, find some approximations. So here would be the example we'd be asked to compute the linearization of this function right here. And then we would also be asked at a certain value, and then use that to compute it at uh, these uh, use this linearization essentially to estimate these two values. So we can do this by applying uh, the linearization formula. So here's the formula and let's start computing these values. So we have f prime at a and we have the function right here. So we can compute f prime at a by simply finding the derivative and plugging in a equals one. So the derivative of this function would be half x plus three times negative one half. And now f prime at one, since a equals one right here, would be a half times one plus three to the power of negative one half. Now this right here would equal to one fourth. And now we have found our f prime at a. And this right here is pretty obvious. Uh, there's no really need to compute that. The last thing left to compute is f at a. So f at one would equal to just the square root of one plus three, which is the square root of four, which is the square root, or sorry, uh, it's actually two. So now we've computed all the values and all that's left to do is plug them in. So we get L of X is equal to one fourth times X minus one plus two. And then if we want to expand this, we'll get seven over four plus X over four. Now we can use this linearization function right here to uh, compute these estimates. And essentially, the square root of 3.98, an estimate of it, would roughly be the linearization of 0 0.98. The reason this is 0 0.98 and not 3.98 is because if we examine our function, we have the square root of x plus 3, right? So in order for us to get this value right here, x plus 3, to equal to 3.98, right? X must equal to 0 
So this right here is the value that is going to be plugged in into our linearization function. And now we can go about computing the linearization, linearization of f at 0 0.98 pretty simply. We just plug it in and we are going to solve for the value 1.995. And now the other thing that's been asked is to compute the root of 4.05. And again, we have the square root of x plus 3. So x plus 3 equals 4.05, right? That means x must equal to 1.05. This right here is going to be equivalent to L at 1.05. And again, to compute that, we're simply going to plug that in into our function. So there you go, we have used our linearization at f uh, at two right here, or sorry, at one to compute these uh, values right here. So moving on to differentials, uh, I'm going to write down the formal definition and then we'll kind of go over through it uh, with a graph. So here's kind of the definition for what a differential of x is and a differential of y. Essentially, if we have a function y equals f of x, where f is differentiable, then the differentiable dx is an independent variable. So uh, like it says here, it can be given any real value. And the differential of y depends on the differential of x and the derivative uh, of the function at x, as we can see right here. And this uh, definition of the differential of y, by the way, the d is the differential, and then the next thing that comes after that is the variable. So uh, this formula right here is pretty obvious if we use uh, Leibniz notation, where we write that dy over dx is equal to f prime at x, meaning this is the derivative of this function right here. And if we just use simple algebraic manipulation, we can cross multiply this dx upward and we'll be left with dy equals f prime at x times the differential at x. So if we examine graphically what uh, dx is and dy is, uh, I'm going to show you it right here. Essentially, if we take this distance and this is the value that x is gonna change in between these two x values right here. So I'll draw this right angle triangle right here and this right here is going to be dx uh, and it's also equal to delta x and delta x right here uh, equal to dx in this case and it basically represents the change in x from uh, this point to this point maybe we should name these points uh, let's call this p and q so this is the change in x between p and q and delta means change, however, differential is this independent value, but in this case, they are the same. Now, delta y, uh, this represents the rise of the function. So uh, this right here is all going to be dx or delta x, however, dy is going to be this little piece right here, or sorry, delta y. And this represents the change, the y change in the function. So as the definition says, it represents the rise in the curve y equals f of x, which is the green one right here. So all we're looking at is for how did y change from point uh, p to this value right here at uh, the same x value as q. That's dy, or sorry, delta y. Now dy is this entire value right here. This is dy, and dy represents the rise in the tangent line. So I hope that's clear when we're talking about deltas, we're dealing with the change in, uh, like with respect to the function. However, when we're talking about differentials, like dy dx, we're dealing with the change in the tangent. And just to go over it, we can find delta y pretty easily. All we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this value um, at, f at x plus delta x, which is this change in x, and it's gonna get us to this x value right here. And then what we wanna do after is we wanna subtract f of x. So essentially just finding the rise, but dy is given by a different formula as we saw. It's given by f prime of x times dx, which makes sense because this is the amount of change 
and then this is the amount of times we basically uh, apply that change. So if the slope were to be two, and then the dx, meaning the change in x, were to be, let's say, like three, then we would get a total uh, rise in dy of six because we're going to be changing two units for uh, three like x coordinates, let's say. So that's it for this quick lesson on linearizations and differentials. I hope you enjoyed. If the video has helped you out at all, please like and comment as to what I helped you out with. Like usual, if you're new to the channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. It's greatly appreciated. And yeah, I will catch you guys in another video.